Folks, buckle up. You might be asking why you want to buckle up, because tonight, just like every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, is going to be a bumpy ride. It is Wednesday, November 18th, 2020. It is currently four minutes past the nine o'clock hour. I am James. Of course you are you. We are here for another edition, another installment, another episode, another saga in the ever-growing journey that is at home with James live on Twitch. And folks, I hope you're ready because on Monday, we had ourselves an old-fashioned theme night and I thought it was so nice that I thought, why not do it twice? And that's exactly what we're going to be doing for the next hour or so right here on twitch.tv slash at home with James. And what is the theme? Are you out there sitting on your couch, perhaps laying in your bed, maybe on a computer chair? Maybe you're having a nice soak in the tub. Catching up with your old pal, Jimsy Whimsy, covered in suds, thinking, what does this little character have in store for me tonight? I'm going to tell you right here, right now, tonight is all about coolest moments. What does it mean to be cool? Is there such thing as being cool? Can you go from not cool to cool or alternatively Cool to not cool, we are going to find out with each and every one of our guests. Tonight on the show, much later on, in addition to discussing what it takes to be cool, Carla Ma and the big rig, Dave Kaufman, two of our senior tech directors, will be in the tech zone tonight featuring some questions from longtime fans. That's much later on. We will also welcome back the one and only Pat Gordo, someone who I was so proud to let him know what I ate for dinner tonight. Because for years, this guy's been all over me saying, James, you, you got to change your ways. You got to stop with the 13 burgers a week. You got to stop with the two medium pizzas a day. You got to kick the habit of all those hot fudge sundies. You got to get on some nice grilled meats, some greens, some vegetables. He tried to force feed me quinoa once. And I said, no. But then I said, you know what, for you, I'll do anything. I'd take a bullet for this guy. I think I would anyways. Pat Gordo, much later on. We're going to kick things off in just a moment with the one and only Connor Rose replacing his twin sister, Carmen Rose, on the couch as he does every single week. Talking about food, because what else is there to talk about anymore? I was taking a nice, brisk winter walk today. If you're in Montreal, you knew that it felt like minus 10. So what did I do? I wanted a nice hot coffee. I was downtown. I was walking by Best Buy. I was walking by the Bay. And then out of the corner of my eye, I saw Krispy Kreme. And I thought there's no better time to enjoy a Krispy Kreme donut than right here, right now with a hot cup of coffee. I ate that donut in three bites, like a true glutton. My favorite of the seven deadly sins. And then what did I do almost 10 hours later? I went and got a couple more donuts at Tim Hortons. That's right. Chocolate Boston cream with an apple fritter chaser on the side. Four bites apiece. I feel great. I am so caffeinated and so full of donuts that I don't know what's going to happen tonight. But one thing that I do know for certain is we're going to have a good time. Let's kick off the show. Let's do it. Let's do the damn thing because it is eight minutes past the nine o'clock hour now. Replacing his twin sister, Carmen Rose, who used to be here. I haven't heard from Carmen in ages. Where is she? I think she's in Denmark. She's getting over a breakup. I don't know what's going on. In any event, replacing her is a fan favorite on this show, a true Twitch superstar. Let's welcome to the show, Connor Rose. Honor, how's it going, buddy? Hey, James. I'm not gonna lie, I've had a, I've had a better I've had better days. Yeah, it looks like uh, you want to turn your head a little bit for me, there, buddy. It looks like your ringworm is back. Back. Mm -hmm. Well, Miss McConnell's out of town, right? So, or she was, and like I haven't been able to have a bath or like use the ointment, so it just like came back with a vengeance wait wait so you just to recap here you had ringworm it was all over you and then you were driving teacher the considerably older nancy mcconnell gave you a bath that cleared up the ringworm 
But yeah. she's out of town, so you just haven't been bathing? Well, I mean, I've been showering, like, my body and stuff, but, like, I haven't ha used the bubble bath or the ointment. Like, it's all at her place. Okay, so so you're basically waiting for Nancy to get back so you can clear up now your second bout with ringworm. Yeah. All right, so you're waiting for Nancy to get back to give you a nice honey bath. Yeah. Connor, can I tell you something? Yeah. The ringworm on your face looks dangerously similar to the, the case that I've got on the back of my leg right now. Really, James? That's true. Can you show me? Well, I don't know how much of an appetite I have to stand up, adjust my camera, pull my pants either down or up to show you. But how about this? How about next time you're here, I make sure I got a picture ready for you. Man, that would mean a lot to me. Like, it would make me feel so much better, like so much less ashamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't be ashamed. Remember what I've been saying all these months? Hashtag ringworm strong. strong. Yeah. Yeah, what? you're right, James. Yeah, don't be you ashamed. You gotta own it. You just gotta own it, you know? Well, look, let's, if we were, Connor, if we were to play the pros and cons game, of course the con is not certainly speaking about you, the con man, a con would be having ringworm. A pro would be that you are on a dating frenzy right now. Yes and no, James. Yes and no. You're the only person I know, not only currently, but throughout the course of my life that ever simultaneously dated a mother and their daughter. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's pretty cool, right? It's, look, it's a pro. It's a pro. To some people, it's a pro. Some people, it might be a con. Yeah, it's definitely not easy on the nerves. I gotta say, like, it's, I'm pretty stressed out a lot of the time. Okay, well, what's stressing you out? Well, right now, like, like I told you last week, like, Rhonda was like, I want you to meet my parents. Come help me move. They're going to be there. Mm -hmm. And so I did what you said. I was like, I was like, Rhonda, I think I'm sick. Like, I think I should go get a COVID test. And I think right. I should quarantine for 14 days. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no problem, Connor. Oh my gosh, feel better. Like, sweetie, like, it's Okay. And I was like, man, you're like the coolest chick. Now, if I dare ask, did you feel a little bad lying to Rhonda? Oh, my God. A part of the reason why I think this has flared up is because, mm -hmm. like, the lie just, like, has kind of been eating me inside. Right. And it's manifesting itself with a uh, human rot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, she was really sweet about it. But then James. Mm-hmm. Not gonna believe this. Hit me with it. So she called me, she f like FaceTimed me. Yep. And she was like, Hey, Connor, I'm just like checking in, seeing how you're feeling. Like, just wanna like give you some, send you some kisses. By the mm -hmm. way, my parents are here helping me move. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I like grab a tissue. I'm like, Oh, like blowing my nose. What's so th that in you? Is that a tissue in your hand? It's a it's a rag. It's my sister's baby's rag. Okay, so you got a you got a rag just handy? Well, just it was, yeah, I well, I had a box of tissues. I don't have them anymore. But what do you do with that rag? What do you got all the tissues for? James. Connor. What do you use your tissues for? Blow my nose? Yeah, same here. All right, great. So we're on the same page. So Rhonda wants to FaceTime with her and her parents. Of course, yeah. your other girlfriend, Nancy, her mother. So I grab the tissue and I'm like, oh, okay, hey. And then I see that like Nancy's not there. Like Miss McConnell's not there. It's just Bart. Yeah, Bart, so of course, if you're just tuning in, is uh, Connor's 19-year-old girlfriend's dad, Bart Riggins. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like... Hey, Connor, nice to meet you. And I'm like, 
hey man what's up like, you said that yeah okay how did he take that it's a very informal way of talking to someone's parents he was like not much and he said it like that God, James, I don't really remember the tone. I was so stressed out in the moment. Okay, so continue. What else happens? You're exchanging pleasantries with the old man. Yeah, and he's like, Connor, like, you know, I'd really like to get to know you. Do you want to, like, we should, like, hit the driving range sometime. So Rhonda's dad wants to hit the driving range with you? Yeah. It's almost December. What kind of guy is this? I guess he like has a special like membership on an indoor driving range. Okay. That's very, very lavish. Well, he is Bart Riggins after all. Is, is, am I unfamiliar with the work of Bart Riggins? Is he a big mayor? He's the mayor of Pierre (laughs) Bart Riggins is the mayor of Pierre You're telling me the people of Pierre elected a man named Bart Riggins. I guess so. All right. So he's got an indoor driving range because, of course, he's the mayor of Pierrefonds. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, like, let's do that. And then that's when Nancy, wa- I see Nancy walk in with carrying a box. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I'm like, what do I do? Like, I panicked, James. So I was like, Bleh. I just started to pretend to, like, Ralph all over the floor. Okay. Like, and like I like exited the like I like I kind of reenacted it like, you, like you, you did it like that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, sorry, Rhonda and Bart and Miss McConnell. Like I can't talk right now. I'm so sick. Yeah. And then I and then I hung up. Mm-hmm. Now did you catch any heat for that? Was Rhonda upset? No, like she was. She's so cool, man. Yeah. She's such a nice girl, really. Well, we're here to talk about cool. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? I want to put you on the hot seat. Yeah, get comfy there. Connor, who do you think's cooler? Rhonda or Nancy? How about this? What are some things that you think are cool about Rhonda? Well her boobs yeah she's got a really great smile okay she's like really nice she like called to check up on me when i was when i was sick and i was like a liar like a like a like a a a-hole yeah yeah well caring is cool she's really cool in that way she cares a lot Okay, so to recap, you think she's got, quote, nice boobs, a nice smile, and she's caring, and you think that's cool. Now, what's so cool about Miss McConnell, Rhonda's mom? Best grilled cheese sandwiches, hands down. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's, like, so, like, caring. She's also really caring. I wonder if it's genetic. Yeah, the apple does not fall far from the tree, it sounds like. Yeah, like she like takes care of me. She like gives me baths. She like fully cleared up my ringworm. Like that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. She like she had you dress up like Dennis the Menace. Yeah, yeah. She like she's helping me learn how to drive. Yep. She like also has really cool boobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, she like. She drives a Subaru. Yeah. Well, you know, if if I may be so bold to say, it sounds like the list on Nancy's side of things is a little longer than the list on the Rhonda side of things. Well, James, like, just in, like, the little experience that I've had, mm-hmm. like, dating an older woman mm-hmm. is, like, kind of the best. Sure. I have the feeling like you can relate. (laughs) What makes you say that? I don't know. Like anytime anyone brings it up, like I've been watching the show and it's like a couple of people have brought it up and like, you seem to get a little hot and bothered when we do. (laughs) You say I get, well, I get hot and bothered. Yeah. You might be misusing the term hot and bothered. Well, like you get a little shifty, a little, little giggly. (laughs) I get a little giggly. It's only because I'm having a good time on the show. 
Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I'm having Anyways, a good time. I guess you don't, re- you can't relate, but I really like dating older women. I sure. Think. Okay, that's very cool. Now, I've asked about Nancy and I've asked certainly about Rhonda. If I were to ask you, Connor, what's so cool about you? Well, like the first thing that comes to mind is like, you know, they say like you are who your friends are and like you are who your friends are. Yeah. Like you are who are the people you surround yourself with. Sure. Kind of like you are who you eat, but it's like you I mean what you eat, but it's like you are who you're hanging out with. Right. You become what it sounds like what you're saying is you become a product of your environment. That's right. You are who your friends are. Okay, so go on. And like, you're probably the coolest, probably, you're a hundred percent hands down the coolest guy I know. Thank and you. I am, I am like so privileged to like call you my best friend. Yeah, you're really privileged. Yeah. I'm your best friend. Yeah. I mean, I, I figured it was mutual. Let's get back to the interview. Now, what are you going to do moving forward as you juggle these two romantic interests? Well, that's a really good question, James. Thanks. Because like, like it really, like my body is falling apart with the lies. Like you're stressed out. And, and you know what? I want to take some responsibility because I was the one that proposed that you tell this lie. This is on me. No, 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 James, don't be too hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't beat yourself up. Uh, Well, I'm not beating myself up. It's just that I was the one who suggested it and you did it. That's true. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have to take responsibility for our own actions too. It's true. Even if you are who your friends are. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like moving forward, just because of the reaction I've been having and like, just I've been feeling so down in the dumps since I did this, like, I feel like I've got to be straight with them. Okay. So you're telling me and you're telling everyone on Twitch right now that you are going to come clean and let both Nancy and Rhonda once again, mother and daughter know that you've been simultaneously dating them both. Yeah. Like part of me is like, should I wait till after I go to the driving range with Bart? Like could be kind of fun, but Yes. Like overall, I think I have to come clean. And if I think like they have to accept me for who I am too. Mm -hmm. And if that means like that I'm dating both of them, then, then they just have to accept that if they want me in their lives. Now, what do you think the chances of that are that this mother and daughter duo accept you dating both of them? Also, is Nancy still married to Bart? No, they're separated. Okay, well, at least that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Yeah, chances. Of, I'm not really good at math, but like... Me neither. See, James, like, we have so much in common. You are who your friends are. That's right. hmm So, you know, I really have no idea, like, what the percentage is of chances of them accepting it. Yeah. But can I tell you something? If they did accept it, that would be pretty cool. If I kept, if I was able to keep seeing both of them, my like, oh man, like, my heart just like, I feel like it's growing even just thinking about it. Kind of like the Grinch. Yeah, except for he's kind of a mean guy, no? Yeah, yeah, the Grinch is kind of a mean guy. I can't really relate to him that much, but... No, you know what? You are nothing like the Grinch. You know who you're more like is his little dog, Sam. Very helpful, friendly, resourceful, little. All right, I'll take it. You know what? You're kind of like the Sam. To- if anyone's going to be the Grinch, it's me. No, 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 James. I'm kind of crusty. You're being too hard on yourself again. James, James, what's with all this, like, 
self-deprecation. Uh, well, I guess it was just a joke. It was just a joke. I feel like I just got to like check in with your like self-talk here. Like that's very nice of you. You know what? That's very nice. I want like my best pal to like feel good about himself. And you know what? I, I think I'm on the pathway, but with your help, you're the helpful one in this friendship. I've been taking you down, you know, at least recently a bit of a rocky road. James, it's in the past. All right. I'm glad. And you've given me like for every rocky road advice you've given me, yeah. you've given me a ton of good, of good ones. Like I'm like a different guy. I'm like a cooler guy. Mm. Since I've known you. Well, you know what? If I could give you any last bit of advice, it would be follow your heart and speak your truth, no matter what result comes of it. Hi, James. Before I let you go, Connor, can I tell you what uh, I'm going to be doing on Monday? Yeah, tell me. Do you like Christmas? I love Christmas, James. I'm so excited for it. Mm -hmm. Well, this Monday, right here on the show, 9 p.m., I'm going to be lighting my Christmas tree, much like you might see at Rockefeller Center. We're going to do a tree lighting right here on the show. Big event. Oh my gosh, James, mm -hmm. that is big news. I like, if I was, if COVID wasn't happening, I would be there in a second, like helping you put that star on the top. That, I mean, uh, you might, I might have to lift you up to get up there, buddy. <sighs> would not be a good photo for Instagram. That would be a good photo. Imagine that, me picking you up and you putting the star on top of the tree. Christmas 2021, James, you and me at the tree. That, it's a very, that really cracked you up, Connor. <laughs> it's good. It would be a good one. I bet it would get lots of likes. Yeah, probably. How many likes do you think? Like at least 15. At least 15. Uh, folks, this is Connor Rose. Before we let you go, in the interest of likes, where can people find you on Instagram, Connor? Uh, you can check me out at, at coming up Connor Rose. Um, I always follow back. And uh, please like my photos because I'm like working really hard at them. Great. Connor is working really hard at his photos. Connor, good luck, buddy. Be well. And I hope that ringworm turns out better than mine does. Thanks, James. I already feel like it's getting better just because of the weight that's been lifted off from what you've been telling me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good things you've been telling me. So I'm really appreciative and um, keep, keep it up with the positive self-talk. You're my best pal. Can't wait to talk to you again. Good luck on Monday with the tree. Thank you. That's Connor Rose, folks. What a good guy. He might have ringworm, but he's got a big heart. And not in the enlarged heart kind of way. Big in the meta metaphorical kind of way. As mentioned, this coming Monday, we are lighting this six foot five tree. Tons of lights. Tons of ornaments, and I want you to be there this coming Monday. Let us move on with our next guest. Hasn't been here in a while. I believe the last time he was here, he was giving me a health test. And may I say, I passed with flying colors. Welcoming back to At Home with James, it's Pat Gordo. Pat, how's it going, buddy? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. What did you think of Connor Rose? Wow, I have so many thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. So how old is this woman he is dating? The, the mom. Oh, uh, I believe she's in her 50s. So so Connor is 32. He's simultaneously okay. dating a woman in her 50s and her adult daughter who is 19. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> adult. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I wish I wish I could interview Connor. Maybe we'll do that another time. You know, I feel, like I, I feel like I could get at Connor if I really got like deep in a one. Anything is possible on this show because I think I don't want to speak for Connor, but I think Connor would really love to meet some of the other people that pop by the show. But in any event, Pat, yeah. how have you been, man? Things are good? Uh, yeah, I'm good. How about you? You know what? I'm fine. You know, uh, this this whole, uh, you know, quote unquote lockdown doesn't uh, doesn't really bother me all that much. Oh, really? Yeah, no, it's fine. I go, I take a walk. I eat some donuts. Then I eat some more donuts later. I come home. Okay. I work on the show. I take it easy. Okay, so I have a question about the donuts. Um, I'd, love, I'd love to hear it. Okay, so you famously went to two different donut establishments today. Mm -hmm. um, 
So what's the process? Do you only order one donut or like in the Tim, in the case of Tim Hortons, two donuts, or do you order a dozen and then just eat two? No, you know what I ordered? I order them by the quantity. So earlier on today at Krispy Kreme, I wanted one Tim Hortons. I went in with the thought that I would get one, but then I saw that there was, they looked a little fresh. So I wanted two. Okay. And, um, okay. That's fine. Yeah. Which ones did you order with, at, at Tim Hortons? Tim Hortons, I got the chocolate Boston cream and the apple fritter, locally known as a beignet au pomme. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Pretty cool, the- right? I bet, I, bet, yeah. uh, I bet people out there probably uh, think I don't know how to speak French, but I do. Do you? Absolument oui. Ah, ben oui. Oh. Oh, tabarnak. <laughs> uh, oui, c'est ça, Carlis. Ah, Chris, les abs cette année-là. <laughs> You're already fed up. <laughs> yeah, he's plus capable. Okay, well, okay. I'll keep working on my French. I'll get the Duolingo or whatever. Pat, yeah. I wanted to have you on this show tonight. And when I was thinking about the theme, I thought this works well with Pat because mm-hmm. now I don't, we talked about self-deprecation a moment ago with Connor Rose. Yeah. You, in my eyes, are a cool guy. Oh, thank you. You're trendy. I feel like you dress very well. You oh. eat well. You oh. exercise. Oh, I think you're pretty aware of of what's going on in the world, both yeah, both uh, you know sociologically, but also in terms of pop culture. You know what you are? You're with it. I'm. W- oh, thank you so much, uh, James. I I would say I'm sort of with it. I'm mm. getting a bit older. Um, mm-hmm. How I'm old are you now? Good. Uh, I'm 22. No, um, I'm <laughs> I'm 30. <laughs> For a second, I was like. It hit me. I was like, oh, maybe he is 22. And then I thought that can't be possible. I once convinced people that I was 22 and it does work. People do. I yeah. think I have the type of face that could be 22 or 43. Well, world. you have great skin. Thank you. And your energy is very youthful, which I think. Immature. Yes, yes. It, it is. translates to being with it. Before we got on the show, you guys were chatting amongst yourselves. You guys were talking about TikTok. TikTok, yes. Which came up on Monday's show. I had Saima Ahmed here who was trying to yes, dear friend. the dances, the, the musicians. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> okay. So so if we get into the whole TikTok thing. I'm going to yeah. embarrass myself further. But I want to know, do you look at yourself when you wake up in the morning? Yeah. See your reflection in the mirror. Do you think that's a cool guy? Not really. No, mm. not, I mean, not right. I don't think right now, because right now no one's doing anything. Mm-hmm. So I think there's no motivation to like, think of yourself as a cool person, if you will, because you're not doing mm-hmm. anything with love to my job. But like, it's not so right now is not when I feel the most cool, I would say. But you know what, that's pretty cool in itself. If you're like, nah, I don't yeah, I don't like, think I'm, I'm cool, cool enough to know that I'm not being cool right now. Okay. So now yeah. let's say in a, in a non COVID world, a pre or maybe post. Mm-hmm. Let's ask the same question and apply it to that. Cool guy, yay or nay? I would say 50%, 60% of the time, yes, and 40% of the time, no. Okay, so let's really dig in here. I want to do some data analysis. Let's start with the negative side of things. Yeah. The percentage of times you don't feel cool, Mm -hmm. what and why? I think it's when I feel, when I don't feel confident, when I feel like I'm not good at something or, and this relates back to Connor, uh, really, really trying to get into that interview with Connor. Um, mm-hmm. But when I hang out with younger people, I sometimes feel like I'm not with it. Whoa, okay, now why is that? Because anytime I have to be exposed to younger people, I'm uh, sickened. I don't want any part of it. Yeah. It's, it's not of interest to me. I didn't like hanging out with younger people when I was the younger people. Did you always, were your friends always older than you? More, more after high school. Oh yeah. Considerably older. I would say anywhere from five, five years older to uh, seven years older. Okay. But but now here's the thing. In some cases, I'm that guy now. I've got, I've got younger friends. Yeah. I think I'm the same because I used to like. My friends were always a bit older, but also like I used to work in places where I was always the youngest one on the team. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like I've sort of become like this girl I work with. She was like, oh my God. And I just feel so old. Like I'm so old. And I was like, how old are you? She's like, oh, 24. And I was like, ah, (laughs) like, but but let's, let's get down to brass tacks here. Would, is there any part of you that wants to go back to being 24? Okay, <laughs> I got yes. Uh, yes, but with mm-hmm. my current level of maturity and knowledge, like okay, with the so experience you... that I have now, I would like to go back to twenty-four. 
You want the current experience, but then to be able to experience the life of a 24 year old. Yeah. Let's dig in. Was 24 year old Pat a cool dude? What was going on at 24? I was 24. Um, what was going on? I think it was pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was working at an ad agency and I was like the youngest copywriter there. That's pretty cool. cool. I mm -hmm. feel like copywriter is like a cool job in your 20s. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, things were pretty cool, I have to say. What was going on at 24 year old Pat's life that was so C double O L? Um, God, what went on? Um, I feel like I would buy clothes. Like, that's when I first started buying secondhand clothing. So I thought mm -hmm. that was really cool. Um, I, oh, I was like rediscovering my love of pop, but I was doing it in like not an ironic way, but you're like, no, pop music is actually really good music. Sure. So that's cool. Well, now, what um, were you listening to pre rediscovery of pop? I went through a phase. I don't know if it's the gay thing, but in high school, I would listen to a lot of like indie rock. Okay. Was, like really cool. So like I was like really into Franz Ferdinand and I was like, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Actually, the Strokes. Um, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, they're not indie, but they're actually really good. Yeah. Um, having never played an instrument, <laughs> like knowing nothing about music. Yeah. Um, the yeah, yeah, yeahs, bands like that. I really, I well, really I want to now, I want to dig into this idea of rediscovering pop because when we were getting to know each other, yeah, one source, what I believe to be of entertainment for you, was my yeah. lack of knowledge of pop music. Yes, and I yeah. saw the clip where you clearly don't know who Doja Cat is. Yeah, I thought it was Dodo Cat, and it's not a joke. People probably looked and thought he's putting it on, he's pretending he doesn't no. know, but he knows. I don't know nothing. No, I no, he doesn't know anything. You vividly. Guys, this is not an act. This guy knows nothing. nothing. No, I don't know. I don't know anything. And I remember telling you, oh, I heard that cool for the summer song. That was, and I think that it was, was the sad, summer I after. I think yeah. it was the summer after. We had already been cool that summer. It yes. was like way too late. Yeah. Okay, so I have a few questions for you. And I feel like we keep bringing it back to this, but do I love you it. know who Beyonce is? Yeah, I know Beyonce. I know Destiny's Child. I know Single Lady. Okay, but the fact that you think Beyonce is just the woman from Destiny's Child makes me think that you maybe don't know who Beyonce is. But that's the thing. That's my reference point. I remember the Single Ladies. I remember that's like some the, the, video, the video where she was in the short jean shorts, her first big video. Crazy in Love? That's the one. That's a hit. It was a hit in 2003. If you like it, put a ring on it. Is that's that the same song? Lady. That's the same song. Yeah, that's, that's the same song. This, okay. But anyways, yeah, I know Beyonce. Do you like Beyonce? I mean, not really. I I, I don't hear her music and I'm not repulsed, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, affect me in a positive way. Okay. Who are your top three musical artists? Oh, I, I can't pick. It's too difficult. Okay. okay. It's too difficult. Okay, if I if I had to really Here dig in, yeah, like my my favorite band is Faith No More which is a fairly unpopular band from the mid to late 80s into the early 90s. Very successful in Europe and South America. Okay. Unpopular to most people. After that, it's very difficult to, to pick. You know what? I've been on a Jim Croce kick. What? Been on a Jim Croce kick. People of the show. No, I heard that. you. I just don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jim Croce. Well, he's got some hits like... Uh, New York's not my home. Bad, bad Leroy Brown working at the car wash blues roller derby queen. Wait, Don't is mess that the working at the car wash song? The working at the car? No, that's not. That's a different car wash song. Oh, okay. What else? He's got the operator. These dreams, photographs and memories. Oh, one less set of footsteps. Yeah, I could go on forever, baby. You're, don't don't. OK, OK. Um, Who's number three? Who's number three? Yeah. If I had to pick right now, gosh, who would it be? That's, you know, this is tough because I feel like when you're asking someone, pick your favorite kid. If you got five, five or 10 kids, who are your top three kids? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if you have 10 kids, you must have a top three and a bottom three. You know, I, I'm just, I'll throw, I'll throw guns and roses in there. Oh, I know throw, who that is. Oh, there we go. We found we connected. It wasn't through Jim Croce, but we connected through Guns and Roses. Oh, I didn't say I like them. I just know who they are. But we connected. We connected through it. Sure. So this is this is why I go back to what I mentioned earlier. Why I project coolness onto you. Now I want to be crystal clear. I think of myself as a cool person because I don't I care. So. I don't give a rat's a double s about what is cool. 
I don't have any interest in learning what's cool. I have denounced myself from part of society multiple times over the past mm. 15 years. Yes. So maybe we're both Most cool. parts of society, I would say. Yeah, I think so. But in, on a serious note, I do think that's true. Like, I think being yourself and being con- being confident in who you are is yeah. cool. Yeah. Now, what do you think the coolest thing about you is? About me? Mm-hmm. Oh, my hair. I was going to say improv. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so you don't think I'm cool. <laughs> I was going to... Oh, come on. Everybody knows that improv's the coolest. I mean, zip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Zap. <laughs> We uh, somehow f- found a way to make that warm up even lamer than it is because I've never once instructed anyone to do it like this. Uh, okay, but what um, what is one improv warm up that you would never ask your students or like some a troop you're coaching to do? Oh God! Now and when you coached ta- me for years, so if you say something and then I when we're talking about, about things that aren't cool, then here we go. We're yeah. we're in it right now. <laughs> One warm up. You know what I find? Uh, I find Bunny Bunny highly irritating. I love that one. <laughs> it's it's a great energy builder, but I uh, and I'll, I'll tell you what. Here's one thing that I instruct people not to do right now. When folks are doing a five things or eight things exercise, they do the countdown: one, two, three, four, five. I instruct classes to not chant at the end of it. Five things. Those are five things. Okay. I said to one class, I was like, uh, can you uh, can you not do this? And they said, why? And I said, because it uh, drives me crazy. Oh. Yeah. I feel like you sometimes get, like you go from like, there are ups and downs with, with your mood in an improv class mm-hmm. or session. Sometimes you, sometimes you're on a high, but then sometimes you dip into a low and there's yeah. no coming back from that. <laughs> you know what we got to do? We got to do a whole episode dedicated to memories of me as a teacher. <laughs> that's every time I come on, that's basically what we do. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And you know what I think about that? I think it's pretty cool. I think it's cool. Now we've been talking about uncool. Do I dare ask what you think? Well, no, I want to circle back here. Okay. You said your hair is the coolest thing about you. You have pretty cool hair. It Thank seems you. current and it seems hip. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, well, I mean, it, uh, it's mostly curly and there's nothing yeah. you can really do to control the, I mean, I could perm it, I guess. But Now, like, if you let it grow out, does it grow literally out? Yeah, because it doesn't, it grows longer a bit, but like mm-hmm. it doesn't, I don't know if I can, because like it looks pretty short. Yeah. But then when you straighten it. It's actually see now. Now you're going full flock of seagulls right now. Yeah, see, it reaches like my lip. Yeah, can but... you grow? Are you? Can you? Can you grow any facial hair? I'd love to see you with a goatee like Connor. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean Connor looks great, but maybe I want to interview Connor because I'm interested in dating Connor. Who knows? Uh, Look, right now he's is really doing it for me. Connor's on a dating frenzy. Yeah, but is Connor? Uh, is I've never on the, on the LGBTQIA plus. I've never asked if he's part of the LGBTQ plus community. He could be. Maybe we'll find out. Um, I want to get me some of that ringworm action. I almost feel like being Connor is it's 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 a sexual orientation unto itself. Yeah. I feel like it's LGBTQIA plus C. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can throw a C in there, and it's like, hey, what's a C? Oh, that's for Connor. But what's you know that? what? I... Oh, it's this guy on Twitch. On a... Okay, but I do think what's cool about Connor is that he's doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. Is it something I want for myself? No, but he's yeah. doing his own thing. And he's like, he knows what he wants. And he's, well, I mean, he doesn't know what he wants. Yeah. Like, and like, does he want older or younger? But he knows, like he he's very comfortable with what he's doing. Well, now we've been all over the map. And I yeah. feel like this is, I, you know what? This, this feels like the episode inspired by Connor. Could you ever envision yourself dating someone and at the same time, dating their child their child is of age you know know, that's a tough one um but i would challenge myself to do that someday yeah i think it would be a fun challenge something to do once i would i do it forever probably not i think i would get tired and exhausted and as connor would said i would develop ringworm from yeah Pat, i think right now on this show you're coming out as connor Yep. (laughs) (laughs) You got me, James. Yeah, you know what? But I think on some level, there's a bit of Connor in all of us. 
there is. And mm -hmm. he, by which we mean he slept with all of us. But yeah, I think yeah. there's a bit of Connor in all of us. Yeah, there is a little Connor in all of us. Uh, Pat, before we let you go, yeah. is there something that you would say is the least cool about you? About me? Yeah. Uh, Want to try? To, we'll try to be humble. We're gonna try uh, to be humble here. Yeah. Sometimes I get like I'm not the most confident, so sometimes I get nervous and like a bit needy. So I, oh, I, I don't think that's that's. You know what? Neediness is. It's not cool. We've all been needy, right? Yeah. Like Pat, we needed donuts, and that's. Yeah, I needed donuts, and I'll tell you what. I I satiated myself, and I feel better about it now. There you go. Pat, I want you to come back soon, and next time I want to see a goatee. If you Sounds if you get a goatee going, I'm gonna put you on the show with Connor. <gasps> My dream. Okay, thank you. I will. Pat, I love you. Love you too. Let's talk soon, okay? All right. See you soon, James. That's Pat Gordo. Say hi to Connor for me. I will say hi to Connor for you. Earlier on in the chat, Real Sid Rock, our show's chief political correspondent, was regaling over Pat Gordo's jawline. And I'm able to look at it now. Pat's no longer on screen for the rest of you on Twitch, but I can see Pat. It's a great jawline, but I'm going to tell you something. You know who else has got a pretty good jawline of their own? Someone whose jawline is uh, hidden under a beard? It's this guy right here. Number one, Lil Cutie. Folks, before we move on to our final segment of the night, we will be back this coming Friday. And guess what? The show is already booked. Who's on the show? We got Steph Mercier Voyer. She's debuting a new segment. I'll wait for her to announce it. Also on the show, Raylan Carson is coming back. Also on the show, happens to be part of our next guest panel. It's Dave Kaufman. So let's welcome Dave. And of course, let's welcome Carla Ma. It's now time for the return of the Tech Zone. Carla, Dave, how are you? Good. How are you, James? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was just. Well, I was oh, waiting for. Oh, to sorry. I was muted. I muted myself. I thought I pushed in the button and I did not. Okay, that's. Uh, you're pulling a Dimitri Kiras because, of course, Carla, you are working the board tonight, yeah. and you uh, had yeah. a bit of a audio boner. A little, a little wee audio boner. Yeah. Dave, I want to go over to you. I don't know if you've ever had a tech boner in your time working in the booth. Oh, I've had plenty of boners, James. That's ridiculous. Tell us about them. Um, big, well, you know, I've, some big, some medium, none small. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I uh, forgot to turn the audio on, you know, during the uh, intro song, other little snafus kind of like, like this, uh, this little voice you're doing right now. What's the voice? Yeah, what's it's the voice? like, it's kind of like, uh, oh, you know, James, sometimes big, never small. Is that Dave, Dave is you're that nervous right now. You're nervous. No, I'm not. This guy's nervous. No, Carla, how's it going over there? It's all right. <laughs> all the good delivery on that one. I I'm going to just. Oh yeah, that God, was good, too. That's the one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was. Everyone's got. I feel like I'm making my tech team nervous tonight because Dave's what? like, never. Never small. And then Carla's like, nah! <laughs> Anyways, guys, look, um, before we really kick into high gear, we're fine. Carla's falling apart over there in British Columbia. We're talking about being cool. And right now, I'm not getting a lot of cool vibes off of you guys. Yeah, I'm not cool. Dave, I'm nowhere near cool. I can never Dave and Carla, let's, let's start with you, Carla. What would you say, quickly, is the coolest thing about you? reasonable that is that's a very see now that's something that we would never as a teenager say is cool but as an adult the definition of cool changes dave let's send it over to you coolest thing about you also reasonable james you <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna say something here mm -hmm. dave is a very reasonable guy he's often the voice of reason also one of the best jaw lines <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? If we can't provide ourselves with moments of self-affirmation, we can't expect others to do it. So we have to be there for ourselves. You know, it's become a theme tonight. I, I dare ask, guys, what do you think about Connor Rose dating a mother and the daughter? Carla? You're 
already know how I feel about this. I said it once and I'll say it again. Dump them both. Why? You know what's coming. You, you know what's on the horizon. It's just trouble. It's not now, what your advice, by the way. Yeah, you let Connor down the wrong path. You need to just... You're gonna build a nest of lies, ugly lies, and then it's just gonna blow up in your face. If you were good, blow if you were good friend to Connor, if you were Connor's best friend, you would look out for him and have his best interest. How about that? Carla, you're not acting very cool right now. No, they, I lost my cool. You know what? I think you could use a guy like Connor in your life, Carla, to kind of cool you off. But you just watch out because he might also date your mom simultaneously. <laughs> Dave, let's go over to you. What do you think about Connor dating Nancy and her daughter, Rhonda Riggins? Well, I agree with uh, Carla on this one. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> you want to expand on that? <laughs> sure. I mean, it's a little bit... Uh... You were so nervous. Really? Really? You're sweating bullets. Not really. You're sweating like Jesus on the cross. Let's continue. Um, it's a little perverse. Yeah, that's weird. If someone was dating me and my mom, I'd be upset about it. Okay, and, but what uh, if someone was dating you and your dad? Because that's the situation. That's Come even on. worse. My dad's, uh, banging my significant other. Are you kidding? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> well, I'm not Are saying you kidding, it. Are kidding, man? Look. <laughs> That'd be terrible. I just want to know if you it's You go cool. to a family dinner and your old man... Makes you smell his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> this now you. I like that you're, you're talking about the perversion, and you've just you, totally you, perverse. You you've spackled on a layer of perversion, unlike anything this show has ever seen. This is your scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this yeah. no, it's it's Connor's scenario. It's Connor's scenario. Look, David we've being discussed. perfectly reasonable. Yeah. You know what? I I like to think of myself as a bit of a reasonable customer too. So. We're all reasonable. We're all cool right now. Okay, let's all chill. Yeah, let's, let's, take take a, chill let's take a couple of breaths. Take a couple of breaths. Let's refocus our energy. <laughs> we are going to switch gears here. <laughs> it's been a very long time since we've had an installment of the Tech Zone. Last time you were here, we had a variety of questions <laughs> sent in from longtime fans, viewers, and audience members of the show. And just like we did then, we have some more tonight. So we want to get into the minds of the two top techs on Twitch. Great. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say get into the mind of Mencia. No, no, we're not going to be getting into the mind of Mencia tonight. Oh, we just we oh, are. Darn. We are about to get into Carla's mind by way of our first question. This comes to us mm -hmm. via email from Emily Satriani. Email goes as follows. Hi, Carla. Mm -hmm. I am an aspiring programmer with high hopes of changing the game in the development world. Mm. If you could provide one tip that would help me along the way, what would that be? The thing is, my father doesn't believe in me, and I hope with your advice and help, this might change his mind. Thanks. That's coming from Emily Satriani. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I, I, sorry, I got distracted because somebody just did a follow while we were talking. So I just want to say thank you for the follow, Avalanche Kid. Yo. Woo! <laughs> Avalanche Kid, what oh, up? No. Thanks for following. Oh, man, okay. And also, uh, oh, you're going to have to repeat some stuff. I got to ban some. You know what? I'm going to repeat the whole thing. This first question comes to us by way of email from Emily Satriani. Hi, Carla. I'm an aspiring programmer with high hopes of changing the game in the development world. Mm -hmm. If you could provide one tip that would help me along the way, what could that be? The thing is, my father doesn't believe in me, and I hope that with your help and advice, this might change his mind. Thanks. Oh. Ooh. It's a it's a sad, it's a kind of a sad situation. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Well, like, I just don't know why. I just don't know, like, how her father doesn't believe, or, like... I mean, because like, oh, because sometimes your parents are just sometimes parents just don't you, understand, right? But then sometimes they don't understand. It just, I don't know enough about her to know if that's maybe like sound advice. I don't know, but I say like, hey, if this is something that you want to do and this is your true passion, 
what, what does it matter if 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 somebody doesn't believe in you um, mm -hmm. even if it means if even if it is your direct family immediate family um, yeah because you just it's your life it's your life in the end I mean they're they're gonna ultimately they as a parent they should want to look out for your happiness and um, eventually there you just have to like maybe find a way to get your father to feel comfortable about the idea because if there's some insecurity or unsureness let, let maybe it's about approaching that in in him and seeing how you can help illustrate to your father that he he you that you know that this is a thing that you truly want and he should support support your choice that is a very nice. reasonable that's a reasonable answer oh thanks you're helping people along the way in the development world, but also with family issues. Mm, yeah, that was a little bit of a doozy. I had to get in there. <laughs> so I hope you're out there watching Emily Satriani. Dave, we've got a question for you. This one comes in from Paul Conroy. You ready for this? Yeah. My internet's unstable, but I'll be I'll be here. Pretty suspect for such a tech-based guy. Let's get our first question for Dave coming to us from Paul Conroy of Hamilton, Ontario. It begins with, what up, Devin? Sick. I think, you, I think you meant David. I heard that you left a cushy job at Ubisoft to join the ranks of a startup. What was your thinking at the time, and did it prove to be the right choice for you? I'm in a similar position right now, and I'm torn up. What should I do? P.S. Do you know who called in the hoax last week? Um, well, I'll start with the... Last part of the question first, I don't know who called them the hoax last week, but swatting is something that can be pretty common in the uh, video game community. Mm -hmm. You know what swatting is, James? Vaguely, isn't it? Isn't it uh, kind of, isn't it basically just creating a fake, you know, uh, crime situation that yeah, brings. Yeah. You, uh, you call saying that there's a, uh, a high, uh, highly dangerous scenario going on. So they call on the SWAT team and uh, people's streams, much like this stream, have been broken up by uh, a SWAT team entering a, a house and uh, dragging that person away. Right. So you don't know who, who... So I don't know. Okay. So how about the first part of the question, Devin? Um, well, I mean, the reason I left Ubisoft or Ubisoft, as you put it. Is that not uh, how it's pronounced? I don't know. It's, it's like uh, potato, potato kind of thing. Okay. Some say Ubi, some say Ubi. <laughs> yeah. A few, a select few say Ubi. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, I left the job because I had sort of uh, plateaued in my position. I was looking to take on new challenges. At a, when you're at a big company, you kind of, uh, you get really in-depth knowledge about a specific set of skills, but I kind of wanted to broaden my horizon. And now at my new job at a startup company, I'm doing all sorts of stuff. So every day is a little bit different, except all my days are the same because of COVID. Right. So that's your answer. That's my answer. Great. Carla, we're going to go back to you. We have another question for you. This one comes to us via Instagram DM from Michael Castile. Carla, are you ready? Great. The question goes as follows. Hello, Carla. My name is Michael. I am 17, six foot tall with brown eyes. I'm about to graduate from high school with an interest in pursuing a career in the tech world. Truth be told, my friends and classmates have aspirations of becoming sports stars, doctors, and chefs. Honestly, I'm just feeling like a world in tech isn't cool enough. Any tips on how to get over these insecurities? Thanks. First off, why did he describe himself? This was a You're gonna have to take message. that one up with Michael. You're gonna have to take that one up with Michael Castile. Okay. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> At first, I was like, "Is he wanting to be an actor? Because that would maybe make more sense." It was kind of a bit of uh, <laughs> a bit of something he would recite at the beginning of a, a demo. Yeah, or just have at the top of his acting resume, you know. Well, anyways, yeah. in any case, so he wants to become a game. What is it? You want a game developer? Or? He's just interested in pursuing a career in the tech world. Tech Kept world. Big. And yeah. he's all insecure because all his buddies want to do other 
careers. Okay, well. Sports star, chef. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, bar, I mean, like, yeah, you do. I mean, like, the, in life, you're always going to feel insecure in and out, up and down, all around. You know, it, it, building confidence takes time. And it's, you know, a daily effort. But, you know, you reach a certain point where you actually, if you know who you are and you love what you do and you're you're being true to yourself and, I mean, just embrace it. Just embrace it and love it and not care about if other people are judging you and thinking that you're not cool. Because those people don't really matter anyhow if, like, they're coming down for you because you're pursuing a career in tech. If anything, now what if, what if the people what if, that think you're cool? I don't know. Like, what if it was huh? what if it was your dad? What about my dad? Oh, what if it Oh, that I mean then if it's your dad then maybe he's just teasing you. I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay. So you want to you want to rise rise above the feelings of ina inadequacy. Yeah. All right. Again, a very reasonable answer. Dave, are you ready for your next question? Sure, yeah. I noticed that a lot of these questions are sort of like uh uh sort of considering a career in tech to be this like <laughs> to be this like dream job wherein you like have to disappoint your parents because you're going <laughs> into the field of it well you know what i i can't get into the brain of, of michael castile of course not paul conroy emily satriani but we do have a question this one comes in from susan r dave no last name hi david r yeah, it could be, uh, it could be could, just an initial. <laughs> Hi, David. Long time Hello. viewer and big fan of yours. I'm newly Correct. married to my husband, Glenn, and he is part of a software development company. He works long hours, but often spends his free time doing research unrelated to his position. From watching the show and from what I can gather, it sounds like you and Glenn have a little in common. And then she put a winky emoji. What in the heck is with you, techies? Great, uh, great question, Susan. Thank you very much. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe to the show. <laughs> um, what's with us? You know, when you have a sort of personality that uh, has a, recluse. a very curious or recluse, <laughs> I was going to say curious, you know, yeah. a, a passion for knowledge, a yeah. thirst if you will. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you just want to learn, spend your time learning. I mean, maybe Susan also, uh, you could uh, maybe uh, do, be a little bit more interesting. You know? <laughs> okay. So Susan, you know, I just want to let you know that the opinions draw, expressed by David Kaufman do not necessarily represent. Get my... that guy out of the office, you know, uh, reel him in with something. I don't know. Any suggestions as to what? Well, uh, everyone likes uh, everyone likes uh, cup Maybe. of soup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone likes cup of soup. All right, so your tip is to reel him in. I like that. Yeah, reel him in. <laughs> We've got one last question, and this one is for the both of you. Yay! Oh, this Wonderful. one was the only one that came to us by way of Twitter. It comes from us at Dim Key Res. At Dim Key Res. Hi, Dave and Carla. Recently, I've been dabbling with OBS and Streamlabs, which is a streaming application that you can use to stream video from your computer, often used for video gaming. I've been hitting some bumps in the road as of late, including audio difficulties, which range from not turning it on to turning it on too soon. In addition, I've had my fair share of video problems too, mostly having to do with resolution. No matter how much I practice, I can't seem to get the hang of this crazy things. Any tips? Thanks. That's from at Dim Key Res. Well, uh, I would suggest uh, maybe looking for a new career. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, um, you know, uh, I don't know, pursue something like acting or something that's more feasible for someone like yourself, Dim Key Res. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I... I... <laughs> I don't know Is what to something, say. Something funny, Carla? I feel well, like if you, you have, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah, maybe yeah. I shouldn't say anything. You've set the tone with a lot of very inspirational answers tonight. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think I have any inspiration to give. 
the wrong you at your... No. You have nothing the for wrong... at Dim Kires? Maybe find a career in pornography. I don't know. What type <laughs> of career? <laughs> Writing porn. Something like that. Anything else? Doing it. <laughs> Doing it? Okay, so... OnlyFans is very popular these days. OnlyFans is very popular. Yeah. So, Carla, you've got nothing for poor at Dim Kires? I feel like Dave's handled this one quite well. <laughs> He's handled it quite well. Well, yeah, yeah. guys, those are all the questions. Before we call it a night, any any thoughts for the people of the tech world that are interested on any type of tips, tricks, or how-tos? Carla, anything on your end? Oh, I, I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> okay, Dave, any last thoughts from you? If you're uh, running a bunch of... Uh... Computer instances on AWS, you got to be careful uh, because uh, those uh, those computers can uh, add up really quickly in price. So uh, start slow, uh, get your first bill, and uh, then take it from there. Very cool. Now, as we begin to wind down on tonight's episode, I want to ask, similarly to what we've been asking throughout the night, Carla, is there anything that you feel uncool about? that you would like to alter moving forward? I'm sorry. I had to think a little bit. Yeah, what we're going to go over to Dave. Dave. Is it uncool about myself or about the show? Yourself. <laughs> myself? Uh, I'm not a cool person, so. Oh, I mean, come on I, now. I've, I've, I've sort of just given up on any yeah, element of that. I'm like just going to. I've given up. <laughs> I'm just going to stay in my basement eating my Doritos, <laughs> streaming on Twitch. Oh, yeah. That's that. Because Dave and I both have something in common. We fell asleep on cheese or had cheese. We've fallen asleep with cheese on ourselves. <laughs> or... Yeah, you know what? That That is very – those are uncool <laughs> things. Sorry. That... Sorry. I, I didn't mean to bring that up, Dave. No, know. it's fine. It's been brought up on the show multiple times. That also, is like – that can be altered, right? You don't have to fall asleep with cheese on you or beneath you. And Dave, it doesn't also have to feature a knife. That's true. But I, I wanted to say one more thing about that, actually, is uh, I feel I'm a dad now. And I feel like uh, you don't really necessarily want to be like a super cool dad. Like, uh, I feel like you like that at that point in your life, in my life right now, I'm just like, I need to be more responsible than, than cool. What am I gonna get a leather jacket and like walk around with my kid in a stroller? No. Yeah, thanks. I want you. I will. I'll tell you what. I want you to get a leather jacket so you can wear it on this show. Okay, I have one. Great. Whoa. It's actually uh, my father-in-law's. <laughs> That's oh, very cool. That is Thank very you. cool. Yeah, bring it out. Bring it out for Friday. I'll bring it out for Friday. Yeah, yeah. Build a character around that. <laughs> All right, uh, Andrew Dice Dave. <laughs> Keep working on that name. Guys, before we let you go, this Monday is fast approaching when we have the first ever at-home Christmas tree lighting extravaganza. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to have some breaking news right here. Oh. Dave, we are going to be breaking COVID rules this coming Monday, because you are going to be live on site as our special on site correspondent by the tree. That's right. I'm going to be the uh, tree correspondent. I'm very excited, James. I, uh, I'm a little bit sad to be breaking COVID rules, but mm -hmm. uh, I'll uh, be as safe as I can be, you know, maintain as much distance as I can. And I'm going to be out there on the field uh, bringing the news that everybody wants right into their living rooms now Excited. you're probably now you're probably gonna have to be bundled up by that tree i mean it's i mean who knows with this weather you know yeah, the weather? yeah you might even have to wear a leather coat <laughs> i might be wearing a leather <laughs> coat now now carla uh -huh. it's it's sad to me that we cannot break covid rules and have you live on site but of course you're coming to us from a different province where it is currently 608 p.m or excuse me, 7.08 p.m. I'm losing track of my time zones. <laughs> mm -hmm. If in a hypothetical world, if you could be on site, what do you think your preferred job would be at the Christmas tree lighting this upcoming oh, Monday live on Twitch? I would have been the person like giving out hot chocolate. Oh, that's very sweet. Yeah. And candy canes. Hot chocolate and candy canes. Well, you can well, your candy cane in it and it becomes pepperminty. 
Well, I want I want you to answer what you think about this, Carla, in the chat right now. Once again, from Sid Rock, he wants Dave to be an assless chaps for the show on Monday. Yay or nay, Carla? I think, I think it's pretty cool. I think that's dangerous because you could get frostbitten butt cheeks. Yeah, that's true. I'd have yeah. to remove my butt cheeks. Yeah, yeah, you might have. have you might have insurance, to... so. Don't yeah, yeah. This unfortunately well, we cannot insure you on the show, Dave. That's okay because I have the same insurance plan as Jennifer Lopez. Oh, so my you? ass is insured for a million dollars. <laughs> Your ass? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it was so special. It's part of the startup. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully we see it wrapped in a pair of chaps this coming Monday. Before we call it a night, guys, any last thoughts? I will also be lighting my ass <laughs> on Monday. Okay, so not only is this breaking news right now? It's breaking news. Because here's the thing, Dave. Uh, you put it out there, it might have to happen. Hey, if you want something to happen, you got to put it out there. All right, so you heard it here first. Not only are we going to be lighting the at-home Christmas tree, we're going to be lighting Dave's ass on Monday, Carla, I don't think Dave's going to be serving up hot chocolate. Oh, oh, that's too bad. As long as, yeah, as long as it does not come out of his butt. <laughs> Dave? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Carla's going to be serving hot chocolate and Dave's going to be serving hot diarrhea. Guys, thanks so much for being here in the tech zone and I'll uh, talk to you over the next couple days. Thank you, James. <laughs> You're welcome, Dave. Bye, Carla. Folks, that's our show tonight. Now, I don't say this every show, but I had such a great time tonight. I had such a great, great time. Caught up with Connor Rose. Things are getting a little bit more unusual, but you know what? It's his world. We're just living in it. Caught up with Pat Gordo. Had a great conversation, as we always do. Then we answered some fan questions with Dave and Carla. Found out that Dave is going to be lighting up his own derriere on Monday night in addition to the Christmas tree. You know what this means for tonight? It means this was a very well-rounded show with high levels of entertainment and joy. I want to thank all of our guests, Pat, Carla, Dave, Connor Rose, for being here. Appreciate it. If you're in the chat, if you're watching at any point tonight, thanks so much for being here, showing us your support. Liking, subscribing, following, this, that, and the other. We'll see you on Friday night when we are back right here on twitch.tv slash at home with James, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, I am James, you are you. We were here. Good night, goodbye, farewell, and be well. Good job.